was the sound of me drinking my double shot almond latte. Welcome to the double shot with Australia's favourite cousins, coined by somebody else, repeated by me, James and Alex Fitzgerald. Cousy. Hey, How welcome. Are you? And doesn't the coffee go down well in what is arguably, or well, it have to be, the coldest week Australia's had for the year? It is freezing. So a nice hot coffee goes down very well. Today. I'm actually wearing a double, a Dublay turtleneck. <laughs> I'm wearing two uh, turtlenecks, uh, one joking. on top of the other. I mean, a normal person would probably just invest in a scarf, but I just <laughs> thought of that then. <laughs> just then. I just thought of it then. Hey, a uh, little plug, by the way. You're going to see yeah. H- HQ head office up there in uh, the Gold Coast where you are. All of you are going to get bombed with your own little keep cups, JLF keep cups. You're welcome. Oh, I said, wow. uh, I said to Nads the other day um, in the office, Nadine, I said, Nads, geez, we go through a lot of takeaway cups and, you know, my teal conscience, you might say, is uh, getting a hold of me. We should get 100 keep cups and pass them out. So well, you're going to get a barrage of keep cups and I'd like to uh, your feedback on... I guess the usage of those in in a couple of weeks. And my green member will be very happy to see me as one of his constituents sporting such a habit. Who's that? Max. Your green member. Max. I don't know his last name. Max. He's a green federal member. I mean, a green seat, oh, remember? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know. When you said my green member, I thought you were talking about your wife, but then you said he. Oh, she and would I was also thinking, be happy. Nah, don't. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Let her know. Han, this one's for you. Because I want to tackle today, I just want to get straight into it because there's two huge things to talk about. Number one yep. is probably something that you have never heard of up there in Queensland, Milk Run. Mm. Have you heard of it? I had to Google it when you put it in the show notes. I had not heard of it. Oh, my God. You can get your groceries in Melbourne now in about seven to 12 minutes. And I'm not talking like a significant grocery shop. I'm talking about... Open it up. Crap, I forgot, you know, a bit of eggs, some butter, and I need some new paper towels. Bang, you (laughs) order it. It's literally at your office. Well, that's where I've been ordering it lately because we need stuff on the fly, and I'm usually the only one in here. And uh, no joke, uh, usually like a a young kid, maybe they've sort of tapped into the uni students. They literally get it to you in 10 minutes, and the app says groceries in 10 minutes. It is amazing. If you don't have it in Brisbane yet, I feel a little bit sad for you, but you might have something similar if not Milk Run. Okay. Uh, I don't think we've got Milk Run, but doesn't Coles and Woolies do exactly that? I guess it's pickup, so they, they don't deliver it to you. you got to go is, pick it up. This is basically Uber Eats, right? But Except for milk groceries. Run, yeah. E- exactly. But Milk Run have their own little shop, so they bring their stock from their little, like, dark uh, – what is it called when it's a, a dark warehouse? Like, it's, it's an unmarked space, and yeah. they've got, like – maybe 20 e-bikes and yep. these like kids typically just run it to you. It's unreal. Okay, I wanted to get that off my chest because it literally <laughs> changed my life this week. But there's some stuff that uh, you and I want to just, I guess, yeah. crash right into and that is the Reserve Bank of Australia announcement. Cue all shitty headlines of everyone being in trouble. I mean, it was, it was a pretty big move. I'm not going to lie. It was a big move, but um, were you surprised? Uh, no, I wasn't surprised. I was surprised. I, I, I did, uh, I, I thought they'd increase the rates. 0.5% is a little bit higher maybe than mm. what the economists were forecasting. Yeah. Um, yeah. it's the most they've increased rates by since I think the year 2000 in wow. one go. So they, don't, that was normally, the last time we- they don't normally jump in, in 0.5, uh, but we're jumping from a record low. That's um, right. I know we're still sub 1%. Like, you know, we're talking about, oh, my God, they've gone up half a percent. And it's kind of like I can sort of like akin it to, you know, when you're in Bali and you're negotiating over, you know, you're buying something at the markets and you realise once you convert it back yeah. into Australian dollars, you're actually negotiating negotiating like maybe a dollar fifty, and you're like, yeah. what? You know, this is half a percent. Yes, it will obviously change how we borrow money, um, but, you know, I, I just don't like these negative connotations that are around it. By the way, for those of um, you who have no idea what we're talking about, so sorry, the Reserve Bank of Australia on Tuesday this week, the mm, 7th of June, uh, they released their statement noting that they are lifting the cash rate, um, which it was 0.35 of a percent. 
uh, up 2.85. So it was lifted up by half a percent. We still have record low uh, cash rate under that 1% mark. Uh, and they also had some pretty interesting things to say uh, in their statement. Cuz, do you want to kick us off? Well, yeah, I think uh, just to round out on the point you just made as well, it's uh, still quite a way below. It's about half of where the 10-year average has sat for the Reserve Bank. That's been go. at about 1.6%, uh, 2.3% over the past 20 years. And we normally pay mm. roughly 2% more on our mortgage than, than the cash rate. So mm. if the cash rate's 0.85% today, uh, which it is, it means that our uh, mortgage is probably about 2.85%. So it was still pretty cheap uh, relative. Not bad. And yeah, look, it was uh, it was an increase. They've cited high inflation, I think, is the main driver for it. High inflation Absolutely. and the fact that we've got a record low unemployment rate. So they're pretty mm. confident that there's wage growth happening and that that will start to be reflected in some of the national statistics over the next three to six months. Uh, they did statistics. flag a few more increases as well. Um, but look, I, I think it was it was unsurprising in my view. Um, you know, it, it, if anything, I think it, it means that our economy is uh, getting back to, a, you know, a level that uh, it was pre the pandemic, which is great. Absolutely. They've said uh, there's sort of no more assistance needed post COVID anymore, where we've got a really healthy, very strong economy. Um, and they're saying that, yeah, inflation will probably continue to go up in the next year and a bit, and then it will sort of decline back down to two uh, to 3% in sort of 2024 um, as global supply chain frees up as well. So they have stated in their statement that um, – they've stated in their statement. <laughs> so Philip Lowe, uh, that it Philip is very Lowe much for the last chain. two years, has talked about wage growth as being something that they're keeping an eye on. Uh, what I noticed in this statement is that he referenced household savings he did. Uh, and, and made it a bit more, um, he made it a bit clearer that they really look at that uh, than he has yeah. previously. Normally it'd be a passing remark, household savings strong. Yeah. He talks about the fact that the household savings number is still well above where it was pre the pandemic. So I think they're going to look at that, how much are Aussies saving because yes. they don't want us to be to be you know at this pandemic level of yep. stimulus. They want yep. to basically get the economy back to where it was before the pandemic. Uh, what that means from a household savings perspective is the house the average household was saving seven percent of their income uh, before the pandemic. We're saving about eleven point five percent, so eleven and a half percent today. Mm. That's down slightly on about fourteen percent at the start of the year. But can you believe it? We peaked at 24% in June of the pandemic. We dropped interest rates to a record low wow. in June 2020. But also we're all locked down, so we couldn't do anything, let alone spend our money. That's right. So we've come from and 24% was. down yeah. to 11. We're still at 11, though. I think maybe they'll – I wouldn't be surprised if they look at household savings and when we get to 7%, they may say, well – now we're saving as much as we were before the pandemic, so we're yes. back to normal. We're not going to touch interest rates. Obviously, it's a lot more complex than that, but yeah. I think it, it was pretty clear that that's something that they're looking at now. I mean, I, it, it sort of goes to show that statement of them referring to save, savings sort of says, hey, look, we're, we are increasing, and but we're, we're comfortable because of this reason, because uh, obviously the, the headlines will go to um, everyone in distress. I read something really interesting hot off the press this morning. It was uh, one of the AFR articles and a billionaire by the name of Ray Dalto came out. I, I don't really know who he is, but he said that uh, he reckons because of stagflation, we're probably going to have central banks are probably going to have to cut interest rates again in 2024. <coughs> so I found that really interesting. Obviously, that's, what, a year and a half away um, to even hit 2024. But that'll be interesting to see if we have stagflation where, you know, where um, our inflation is going up, uh, but also our wages are growing, so sort of everything sort of, you know, costing the same relatively or yeah. perhaps, you know, we're paying more but not quite getting paid as ma as much more as we're paying. Um, they may have to cut rates again. Now, you know, I've never heard of that before. I've never heard of anyone comment that before, so I found it interesting and I wanted to mention it on the pod. Uh, well, yeah, and, and one last thing on, on that. Uh, I know you said <laughs> no more one last thing, but I had to sneak it in. Clang, uh, <laughs> clang. <laughs> You don't have to say one last thing. You can just uh, feel free to speak. One more it's thing. It's okay. What about this one more thing? This is a safe thing? space. One this more thing. This is a safe space. Uh, uh, bear, bear in mind that in the last 
12 months, Australians added 15% to their, their total savings. Uh, so over the past 12 months, we've had a very, very good run with these low interest rates. In fact, we're now nearly two years ahead on our mortgages. We're only eight months ahead before the pandemic. So we've and had a very good run. Cousy, and we've had 25, at least 25% growth in our properties if we've held them that over that too. time. At least that too. So it's probably about time we get back to normal is, uh, is. is my takeaway from that one. And that actually leads me into this week's Stat Fact. JB? Stat. Stat Fact. The Stat Man. Stat Fact. <laughs> Nothing makes me happier than when you do the Jimmy Shimmy. The Jimmy Shimmy. <laughs> I like that. I don't even call you Jimmy, but I love no. the Jimmy Shimmy. Okay, this week's Stat Fact. I found this fascinating. Because he ate... Every, every, eight out of every 10 over 60s in Australia are homeowners. 80%. 80% of everyone over 60 is a homeowner. Very high number, don't you think? In Australia, roughly 66% of all aged people are homeowners. So, yeah, 88% over the age of 60. It's a much higher proportion. It is, absolutely. And maybe that's our old school thing. But anyway, I just want to share that little stat fact with you there. No, very good. I like that one. Very, very good. I, I've got a little uh, pop quiz for you later. Uh, but before oh, we move on from the Reserve Bank, I think the one thing that is something that we and all of our listeners need to be conscious of as rates start to increase is I don't think it'll make a big difference to anyone, really. M- majority of people <laughs> are going to be largely unaffected by an increased interest rates. Oh, that what makes it me will, feel good. What it will do, though, is it will make it a little bit harder to get a loan. And mm. the reason for that is that because uh, the banks will always look at whether you can service your debts at 3% above the current interest rates. As the interest rate goes up, you've got that little bit more uh, of a job to do to be able to show the bank and demonstrate to Mm. them that you can service the debt. Uh, We're also seeing at the same time that the Reserve Bank are increasing interest rates, APRA, who are the bank's regulator, they look at basically making sure that the banks are responsible in the way they lend money. They're forcing the banks to look at debt to income ratios. So we've got a couple of things going on, which is just going to make it a little bit harder to get a loan as different from affording the loan itself. Yes. Yes. Very interesting. So what do you think like in terms of, uh, are there any numbers to support what might be hit? Like, are we going to be able to borrow? Are we, are we being docked 5% on what we could borrow before to what we can now? Or you think that'll just unfold in the next sort of one to two months? What's unfolding, uh, APRA have said that they don't uh, really want to see a lot of people borrow more than six times their uh, income in, ter- in terms of, sorry, they don't want the um, debt uh, servicing to be six, uh, si- a multiple of six on the income. Okay. Uh, why that's important is because NAB and ANZ were running at nine. They were Whoa. allowing people to, do, uh, to take on debt to income at a ratio of nine to one They've peeled that back to eight for NAB and seven and a half for ANZ. So CBA are the lowest. They're at six. They've they've already had a benchmark of six. So so just to sort of flatten that out, if you earn $100,000 right on the nose round, yep. uh, at NAB you can borrow $800,000. Yep. Beautiful. Well, actually relatively not too bad. Obviously quite hard to do if you live in like Sydney, for example. Melbourne, you could definitely do that. Yep. Um, and, of, of course, the other capital cities, you know, you could quite comfortably, and, and that's if you're by yourself. Um, you know, if you've got but, a second income there, you should be all right. But with Commonwealth Bank, you can oh only borrow 600000 Oh, my God. further to that, APRA have said we would prefer that number to be six. So APRA have said we would prefer we it would to be 600000 So that can have a, a, a big uh, impact. And then, and then uh, to, on the other side of the equation, NAB will allow you, if they're looking at whether you can borrow money, they'll want you to service today at 4.95%, mm. even though interest rates might only be two, two and a half. Yes. Uh, CBA wants you to service at 5.25%. So it's a lot so, when you're only taking out a loan for half of that. Well, I mean, like the difference is probably not huge, but it could be the difference if that makes sense. So, you know, if you are going to buy something now, 
Um, it might be worth looking at uh, your NABs and not your CBAs or, you know, your second tier lenders. Don't be scared of them. Don't be scared of them. All right. Uh, before we move into the next spat between billionaires, bless you, Alex, or in fact, you've yawned. Uh, before we <laughs> before we talk about the uh, next spat between billionaires, which was really interesting over the weekend, have you seen the Top Gun spat. Maverick? It is, no. uh, it is the biggest selling... Uh, box office hit since 2007 over the same time of the year. Well, when you've already seen it seven times in seven days, no doubt. It's no wonder that they are making a bucket load of coins. I'm coin. contributing, that's for sure. <laughs> no, cars, I haven't seen it yet. Oh, and, you um, got to see it. Come know, on, when was the last time right. you went to the movies? I friggin' forever ago. Pre-pandemic. Forever ago. And uh, Dean fell asleep, so I think we left early. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh what, a, what a sweetie pie. Uh, no, I haven't seen it yet. Sorry, Kaz. Um, but I've got to say that uh, Top Gun uh, and I guess Elon, they're kind of similar. They're kind of similar. Just high-flying guys. You know what I'm saying? High flyers. Yeah, high flyers. Well, there's two high flyers. <laughs> They've had a bit of a spat over the weekend. And we've talked about in previous uh, podcasts about this whole working from home and the hybrid scenario, yep. the fact that a lot of employers are having to offer hybrid uh, working conditions to attract talent today. Yes, yes. But not Elon. Elon, he's not, not interested Tesla. in that. In fact, no, no, Elon no. Musk, founder of Tesla, one of the biggest companies in the world, and he's, uh, what is he, he's the richest guy in the world now? Uh, I don't, I don't, very probably. close to. Let's just say he is. Uh, we don't, yeah, like, very I'll close caveat to. that by saying he may not be, but he probably is. Depending is on the two. day. You know, for a guy as progressive as Elon, this is <coughs> very, like, Unprogressive. Well, he, he's gone as far as to say that the work from home stuff's got to go. It's garbage. He says it's garbage. He started by saying uh, all the COVID stay at home stuff has ticked people into thinking that you don't actually need to work hard. Rude awakening inbound. In oh, fact, he's days. gone on to say it's been raining money on fools for too long. Some bankruptcies need to happen. So oh, that was his. My days. That was his Twitter, and then he sent an oh, all staff yeah. email to say that we are, you are fortunate enough to work at a company that creates amazing products. We're one of the few companies who've bought out a really uh, cool and innovative product in recent years. To do that, you've got to be in the office, he said. So Tesla will going forth have a no work from home policy. Jeez, I hope they're paid accordingly. Well, just because. Just because you work for the one of the coolest companies in the world with probably one of the richest guys in the world doesn't mean you're getting paid enough to go in every single day and, you know. Well, I piqued the interest of uh, the tech billionaires out of Australia, Scott Farquhar Legends. and Mike Cannonbrooks. They're the founders of Atlassian number three and four richest Australians uh, at the moment. They mm. responded by saying and putting out a, a little Twitter feed, uh, coincidentally replying to Elon Musk's own tweet saying, <laughs> uh, we have set our sights on growing our workforce by 25,000 people, uh, employees rather in the next 12, uh, in fact, uh, three years, any Tesla employees interested and he's tagged Elon. Oh my God. <laughs> Basically, if you're not satisfied that you have to go into the office five days a week, we'll bloody take you out because unemployment is at an all time low and we will poach you from Tesla and they're both pretty cool companies. They're kind of like, I mean, not in direct comparison, but they're kind of like the Elons, Elons of Australia. You know? Oh, I don't think they're at his level. But they're, 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 Just the they're put it this way, blokes. they're our most successful Australian tech company, that's for certain. A uh, handy P. Elon, Elon's uh, tripled down, in fact, responding to Scott Farquhar's uh tweet by saying the above set of tweets illustrate why recessions serve a vital economic cleansing lesson or function can you, rather. Can you believe he said that? He's basically <laughs> saying, look, you know, can we just have a recession wipe these cowboys out, please? I thought it was really interesting because all the way back in 2017, Mike Cannon Brooks sent a tweet out uh, where the South Australian government was appealing for a big battery. And he sent a tweet out and asked Tesla if they could build a battery in 100 days for the South Australian government and bet $50 million with Elon Musk that he couldn't. Elon Musk took him up on the bet uh, and asked if that was serious enough for him. And so uh, there is a bit of a oh history between the founders of Atlassian 
and Elon Musk. It, it has been a friendly and cordial one to date, yet they, uh, they're at odds on the working from home arrangements. I tell you, what you can achieve in 120 characters, mind-blowing, just a $50 billion bet in 120 characters. My word. Yeah. Drop hey, uh, pen, Soz Cuzzy. Speaking of uh, employees and uh, and the, the the better conditions lining up for employees at the moment, mm. uh, pay rise coming to low income workers, courtesy of our new treasurer, Jim Chalmers. Mr. Jim Chalmers, there he's applied to the Industrial Relations Board to Looks get a five like percent increase to the minimum wage. Well, you know, it in lines with the uh, twenty one year high inflation. So you know, yep. why not? These guys probably haven't seen a significant pay packet for a bit. In fact, it's going to apply not just to the minimum wage, but what they deem to be uh, low paid workers, which is anyone earning $1,000 a week or less for full-time work only. So anyone earning $52,000 a year or less working full-time is going to be eligible for a 5% pay rise if this gets through. Absolutely. Well, the rationale is that the inflation's at 5% today. The cost of fuel and a lot of um, household goods are increasing by 5%. The minimum minimum, uh, wage workers or or low-paid workers should be getting at least a pay rise to keep up with the cost of living. Absolutely. We don't want these guys going backwards. So hopefully that one goes through. It looks like it's uh, it's a little bit of a maybe at the moment, but he's he's put it through and uh, and asked for it. Uh, Pop quiz time off the back of that. Man, and I know you're not a big a fan quiz. of the pop quiz, but I'm going to persist well, you know, with it. I'm not because, you know, my grades are just so bad in school that uh, I do shudder a little bit. A little bit of PTSD. I, think, a bit of pop I, quiz. Think I'll, I think I'll wear you down eventually. Uh, so uh, a low-paid worker eventually. in Australia is defined as someone earning $52,000 a year or less. Yes, yes. How much do you think the average Australian earns per annum if they're a full-time single worker? Uh, okay, can I ask you a question that you may or may not know? There is the median higher than the average in this scenario. They don't record the median, so we've only got the average to work off oh, from the okay. Australian Bureau oh, okay. of Statistics. Well, based on that, then eighty six thousand dollars is what I think the average income is. Ooh, not bad, not what bad. Is it? It's ninety thousand nine hundred and seventeen dollars oh. a year. Hey, it's gone up. <laughs> you just dropped the f bomb. No, I just went ah. Oh. <laughs> every time I, every time I, ah, you think I've dropped an F-bomb. Uh, no, no, I only do that on, on really special occasions. Okay, so what was I, uh, $4,000 off? Pretty, pretty good. good. Not bad, not bad. Pretty good. Uh, bad. What about the average household? Oh, average household income, I'm pretty sure it's $126,000. Yep. That's pretty good. I think it's 128 now, but yeah, that that, oh. that, that is pretty good. <laughs> so, Wait, I swear, I swear to you, no research prior to today. No research. I've got a little bit of an idea. There you go. Pretty good. So Amazing. there you go. If you're a listener uh, listening along, the average wage for a full-time worker is ninety, just under $91,000 today. Yep. And the average household, because most households have more than one person uh, mm. working, uh, the, it is higher, uh, just under $130,000 today. There you go. A little... little uh I mean, it's not that fun, really, but Australia is the fourth highest tax in the world. Did you know that, Cuz? Uh, I, I only knew that because you texted it to me the other day. Uh, yeah, I reckon that's a rort. I reckon that's a rort. It is an absolute rort. rort. But, How, but I, will, I will just put a layer around that. That is before all of our deductions are taken out, and we do have a pretty good set of deductions, you know, across property um, and I guess various work things that we can deduct. I'm pretty sure once you take all of that stuff out, um, we actually do fall down the line a little bit. But in front of us, Denmark, number one tax country in the world, uh, Iceland, which is teeny tiny. They must just get copped with tax. And then Belgium is ahead of us and we are number four. And that's in the um, OECD. What's that? Or the, the massive economies. There was <laughs> Let's a, just well, go with that. Yeah, There, there, there was a, uh, a, a sub subparagraph, by the way, that, that yeah. factored in social security contributions. So for instance, uh, Medicare for us Medicare. gets taken out of our tax. We don't pay out of pocket costs for healthcare and, and the like. Um, Feels like if it. you factor that in, our total tax burden is about 27% against the OECD average of about 35%. There so you when go. you factor in the health benefits uh, and all the, 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 what other countries call social security, 
our, our, our benefits are actually pretty good. That puts us at 14th rather than 4th. There but, you go. There but you go. we are taxed heavily nonetheless. We are taxed heavily, but I've got to say, because we live in a pretty damn good country. So um, that doesn't necessarily mean I love paying tax, and we should be, but um, all in all, you can't complain too much, can you? Hey, uh, you know what surprised me? CoreLogic do a report uh, every so often that talks about the number of listings around Australia, so homes that are for sale, that have been on the market for 180 days, so six months or more, without selling. And there's nearly 50,000 of them in Australia. I couldn't believe it. W-T-F. Yeah, so I I don't know what to make (laughs) of it. Uh, Every state's different, of course. Yes, um, there. Yes, it is. And in my head, I'm thinking, oh, well, you know, Sydney people are probably just panicking a bit. Uh, maybe these vendors are asking a little bit too much. But no, Hobart actually has <laughs> has um, a higher percentage of those that are on the market a year later. They've got like they're up 13 percent. But I mean, that's only like what, 213 homes that have been on the market for uh, six months, which is it's quite a long time. It's a stale that's a stale, why would you do that? It makes me think these vendors don't really need to sell. They're just waiting for some sucker to come along. You or, know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Or um, the um, they of, need to update their pictures or something. I don't know. I mean, it could, I mean, <laughs> or they've just got the laziest agents of all time. <laughs> yeah. um, and a good agent will, will always be the, the difference. But the number of Sydney homes on the market for six months or longer surged to 9.6%, uh, basically 4,032. Uh, and in Melbourne by 6.2%. So Melbourne down here, we've got 600, uh, 6,378 properties that have just been chilling, chilling on realestate.com, mm. waiting for a mate. Uh, and interestingly, the the, the build-up um, sort of, I mean, RP Data or CoreLogic are sort of saying, oh, well, this is leading to a correction in the market, but it does make you wonder if they're just asking too much, you know, in um, – in their prices. In this, in this low well, rate, high I mean, inflation growth sort of phase. I mean, you could certainly argue that uh, Sydney, Melbourne, Hobart are at the one end of the spectrum where there's been a big increase in the number of homes that are 180 mm. days or, or older. At yep. the other end of the spectrum, you've got uh, Brisbane, Darwin and Adelaide. So, uh, in fact, Brisbane, there's less than there was this time last year. Those markets are the ones that are growing faster than the likes of the Melbournes and the Sydney. So there, there would appear to be a relationship between uh, price growth and how many are sticking around for 180 days. It's it's, it's uh, sort of interesting, isn't it? Because that's never like a like data that we look at. But, you know, what do you know? Even in a hot market or a, a cooling off or a sort of like plateauing market, there's still properties that have been sitting there for six months. You got anything else for us today, Kaz? Any sort of fun, fun reports you've read? No? No, I really? recommend seeing Top Gun Maverick for anyone who hasn't. No Great idea. movie. you got and to see I, it at the movies. Don't I wait t- for it to come out. It is too good to 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 simply be seen at your home on your TV screen. You've got to see it at the movies. Unlike you, Cousy, I don't have a theatre in my house, so uh, I will not be doing that. I will go and see it. And as my dad says, Great. go to see it in the cosy seats. <laughs> yeah. AKA gold class. Yeah, they're cosy seats where you pay $40 just to sit on a cosy seat. But in your in your eyes, probably well worth it. Uh, yeah. Look, I, I don't think it matters. <laughs> it, it doesn't have to be gold class. Just go to normal. Just see it with the the music and all that. Bit of pleasure. No, Good I to be back it. on normal programming on uh, on the morning as we have a coffee for this one. Hopefully the listeners oh, got a bit out of it. it. Let us know. Give us some feedback, guys. And, uh, yeah, have a, have a good week down there. Hopefully, uh, hopefully you can one. double the turtleneck for a couple more days. No, I'm starting to sweat, though, so uh, I'll report back sweat. in next week. Oh, I might be part of the wedge shred, maybe. <laughs> that is a great idea. Keep it on. <laughs> We're taking a third one. See you guys next week. See Yay! you guys. Thanks for listening to another episode of The Double Shot with your favourite cousins, Alex and James Fitzgerald. If you've got a burning question or something we absolutely need to talk about on the pod, please write to us. Both of our emails are in the show notes. For little real estate tidbits and a little bit of banter, okay, a lot of banter, you can follow us on the gram. Our handle is the double shot dot podcast. That, my friends, is the double shot dot podcast. Until next time, think of us when you sit back and sip your next double shot.